Uh, we're now going to move into predictive and prescriptive analytics, uh, prediction and optimization. Um, and this is an area where we've also made significant investments in the Spotify product, but also in R. And uh, we've uh, been on a long journey to create uh, a more performant, um, embeddable uh, R engine. We call this TIBCO Enterprise Runtime for R or TEAR. It uh, Im embeds in Spotify, but it also uh, works closely with our geoanalytics offerings and embeds with our TIBCO event processing uh, products. Uh, so uh, this is now we're in the section where we're looking at data. We've looked at it in Spotify. We're now uh, finding some features and we're building out um, dashboards, but also predictive models. Uh, this is in this chunk of the analytics workflow. I mentioned we've rewritten R as a commercial compute engine. This is an evolution from uh, the original S language, which TIBCO owns. Uh, we also own the S plus product. Uh, and uh, as the uh, open source movement around R has become popular, uh, we've taken our engineering uh, prowess in this area to create uh, our own um, interpreter runtime engine for R that runs R code, including all of the CRAN packages. Um, in the process of doing this, we rebuilt the engine from scratch at a very low level so that the engine is very high performance, um, fast, and runs on big data. Uh, the TIBCO R is licensed from TIBCO. It installs with a Spotfire analyst. Uh, you can prototype in that environment. And then when you want to deploy on a server, you can use our stat services uh, product for big data analysis uh, on the server. And our Spotify server manages all of your scripts and artifacts for reuse which is in, in hugely convenient uh, from a governance perspective. And uh, the fact that this is supported by TIBCO makes it um, you know, all the much uh, more uh, conducive to, to use and uh, management by the IT organization. So with, uh, with the local TIBCO R, you can in Spotify very quickly bring in data, run analyses, R type analyses, and then deploy those to the server on bigger data to run that, those models on the server side. And, uh, and then visualize results um, you know, back in Spotfire. And uh, both Spotfire and uh, TIBCO R can load data from any um, source. Um, the runtime R can read directly uh, from an ODBC or a JDBC compliance source, which can happen on the server uh, or from Spotfire connections or Spotfire information links that are in the library. These can also be accessed by the, uh, the TIBCO R uh, for doing those server-side uh, analyses. I mentioned the R community really taking off with uh, estimates of more than 2 million users worldwide, uh, 126 uh, meetup groups in the US and Europe, uh, more than 6,000 user contributed packages, very active uh, community um, that uh, we're supporting here. Uh, and now that we have um, TIBCO R inside of Spotfire, we can do a variety of things in, say, in the menu systems. We've exposed the ability to do one-click forecasts if there's a continuous variable uh, versus time, for example, you can forecast these out with seasonality in a single click. If you've got a data table uh, from the menu, you can do regression classification, machine learning type analyses uh, directly uh, from a point and click system with TIBCO R uh, as the engine underneath that. Um, you can add uh, expressions. So the Spotfire expression language that you've probably all uh, used is very powerful uh, and uh, We've now added the ability to uh, type R code into the expression area and to add functions where folks don't need to know R, but they can benefit from uh, expressions written in R to do things like adding um, contour lines to a map or doing a cluster analysis on a scatter plot or a map. Uh, these are point and click uh, expression functions that can be deployed and your um, internal uh, advanced analytics team can extend the expression function palette in Spotfire with, uh, with any number of expressions that can be set up in, in, uh, in the R language. We'll see an example from Anna and Peter in a minute um, doing things like uh, segmentation uh, using uh, predictive data functions. So the, uh, from the menu, you can insert a data function and um, that can uh, comprise a set of R code, for example, to, in this case, doing a robust cluster analysis uh, where you map the columns of your Spotfire uh, data to the inputs of the R function. Um, and this particular dashboard I've got a screenshot up here of right now is also does a random forest analysis to um, identify the 
variables that are influencing uh, the, the cluster breakdown. Um, you know, in this case, we're coloring the product revenue uh, by segment uh, for the segments that are estimated. So you see women's fleece here, the biggest amount of revenue and where that's coming from, from uh, the different segments. Anna and Peter will go into this. Uh, now that type of machine learning uh, is one thing, but uh, predictive analytics, but also optimization. Uh, so in this case, looking at distribution of uh, packages from different uh, distribution centers out to different retail stores, uh, the number of uh, um, distributions made per day uh, here being plotted here, we can see that one of the distribution centers is doing a lot of the work. We can add a constraint uh, here uh, for the capacity of these distribution centers. And this is now using the uh, linear optimization function, uh, LP solve uh, API from uh, from an R package that we run as an interactive spot fire uh, analysis through uh, through a data function. So uh, you know, predictive analytics, but also uh, optimization analytics uh, can be done through this data function uh, workflow uh, construct. And then you can add these sorts of predictive components into a dashboard. So that um, Coke uh, dashboard that I showed earlier uh, can be supplemented with, uh, say, forecasts using Holt Winter or Rima. Uh, to push um, analyses out into the future and wire it up very easily to uh, some point and click controls to enable the business uh, user to just click around to look at the forecasts of different products by different regions typically um, and with a seasonal component built in. So with that as background to our predictive capabilities, I'd like now to hand off to Peter Shaw and Anna Nowakowska uh, to take us through some customer analytics applications. Uh, using the you know, Spotfire and, and the data function uh, technology. So uh, please take it away, uh, Anna and Peter. Hi, this is Peter Shaw, Tipco Data Sciences. I'll be talking about creating a tear data function in Spotfire. I'll be using some customer churn data just as an example of this. I'll first take a quick look at the data, and then I'll use RStudio to create a data function that will be used to draw a curve on a scatter plot in Spotfire to distinguish the churn from non-churn customers. First, I'll use a linear, then a quadratic um, function for this. In the second part, I'll be applying this model to some new data of current customers where you don't know yet if they'll churn or not. So I'll be using um, the model to create a column, which is the, the probability of churn. And then with this new column, you can use Spotfire to drill down to find at-risk customers. To begin with, let's look at some sample data. I've got some made-up customer data here. Let's take a look at it in Spotfire. This is historical data from a batch of customers. The main columns to focus on are churn, recency, and frequency. Churn describes whether the customer canceled a subscription in, this, in the study time period. One means they churned, zero means they didn't. We're going to investigate if these two columns, recency and frequency, can be used to predict churn. So we'll hit OK and use the recommendations engine to bring up a visualization. We'll choose churn, recency, and frequency. And we'll select this uh, scatter plot right here. So here we see churn in color is a function of recency and frequency. Churn 1 means they cancel, so let's change that to red. So recency describes how long it's been since the customer has been active, and frequency describes how often they've been active. Both are scaled from one to from zero to 100. So the highest risk for churn appears to be at you know high recency and low frequency. We'll use this data to illustrate building a tear data function. So from here I'll, I'll switch over to developing some R code in R Studio. I'll use the tear tools to bring up the R Studio environment. I'll open a new script. And I'll paste in some code that I have developed previously. So what this does is it basically reads in the exact same data as I've got in Spotfire. You can take a look at it. Uh, there we go. Now, since the churn is a categorical variable, I'm going to use a, a GLM model to, to model this. I've got uh, two models ready. One's a very simple model. The second one, I've got a quadratic term. But this model right here, just take a look at that. Uh, it tells me some information about it. I can get the coefficients out. Look at these. And R is pretty straightforward. Uh, just just three numbers there. <clears throat> I can use these three to basically construct a table to bring back to Spotfire. 
that I can use to draw a curve on top of the scatter plot. So let's copy the code starting from here and go back into Spotfire. So I'll create a new data function in Spotfire. I'll just paste in my code and specify the input output parameters. So the input parameter is going to be this table input data. If I select the name and right click, I can choose it as an input parameter very conveniently like this. I'll select table. There you go. The output is going to be another table, this curve coefficients table. Um, make this an output parameter and it's a table as well. Type OK. So I'm going to now run this. Uh, the input data, all I need is the, those three um, columns, the churn, recency, and frequency. For the output, I'll make the data table curve coefficients. Type OK. I can close this. It'll ask me if I want to save the library. I'll say no. So to put a line on the plot, I'll go into the plot properties. Lines and curves. I'm going to make a new new curve from data table. Select the curve coefficients and just a very simple form of just the constant plus the coefficient of x times x. So here's the line. So I'd like to make this inter interactive. So what I'll do first of all is um, make the data function uh, parameters auto refresh. I'm going to make this dependent on the uh, filtering. And then if I um, make a filter, what I can do is I can uh, first of all make the axes um, kind of frozen there to the current range. If I change the x-axis recency, um, I can look at to see how the, the line changes. So it actually does change the slope a little bit as I move it back and forth. So that indicates maybe the, a straight linear fit is may not may not be the best fit to use. So it indicates I should probably use a maybe a, a curved or quadratic fit to this function. So to set up the quadratic fit, I'll basically modify my existing data function. Go into edit data function properties. I can see the script here. So I'll basically comment out this first GLM. I've got a, a squared recency term I've defined because recency is on the x-axis. And here's the second GLM I have ready to go where I basically um, <clears throat> use the first two terms, recency and fre frequency, plus recency squared term. Inside there, I'll put a squared coefficient, which basically just pulls out the re recency squared term from the coefficients and return that to the um, to Spotfire. And that's basically it. Save it and close. I've got to redefine the line as well. So the line gets modified. So I now have this coefficient squared term to use. So this times x squared. So this new curve actually does a better job of defining the boundary between the churns and non-churns. It curves a little bit and helps really define that kind of slight curvature there. If I move the slider on the uh, filter for recency and kind of look at this a little bit, it really um, doesn't change that curve all that much. So it really indicates that this quadratic curve is a, is a better fit. So I've got a second file here that shows the current customers. Um, these are ones who I don't know the outcome yet. I don't know if they're going to be churning or not. I'd like to apply these methods to the current customer set to predict who might be at risk for churn. So I'll start by bringing this into Spotfire. And this is the same kind of data. I've got recency frequency. I just don't have that outcome column yet. Bring them as a separate data table. So I'm going to make a new data function that's a bit more streamlined. So I'll go ahead and register this new one. I paste in the code. Here's the model. Here's the prediction. So the input data is required as before. Map that. Actually, these are just numerics. So I can just use those. Table. 
and needs the, the current data. I make this new recency squared column for the input data. I'm going to do the same thing for the current data. So there's that line right there. Anyway, the current data is going to be an input table. And then I'm just going to create this, this prediction, which will just be a column, this churn probability. That's all, it, that's all it is. Output, it's going to be a column. And so now to run this, I'm just going to do that. So the input is going to be the same as before the, um, the first data table, which I know the outcome. So I know that I need the churn, recency, and frequency. The current data, I just need the, um, the recency and frequency. And then the output, I'm going to make a column, append that to the, uh, the current data. Let's just call this a prediction to keep those straight. And there you go. Um, let's not save it. Nope. And so if I look at the the current data, this now has a probability at the very end of it right there. So now I might want to investigate the, um, the probabilities themselves. If I look at the, uh, the current customers, look at the probability. Let's choose this histogram right here and I can make it a bit finer scale. Look at that. So, um, these guys are at you know very high risk for for churning. I want I want to take a look at those customers, see who they are, so I can make a um, a detailed visualization of let's say a table, and maybe another one of a um, of a map just to see what these guys are. So here's where the customers are. Here's who they are of the highest risk, and I can look at you know maybe a bit less less risk. You know, so these guys are maybe um, kind of lost cases, but maybe the ones in the middle might be have more um, leeway in terms of swaying their, their decision. So I'd like to acknowledge Ujval Kamath and Ian Cook for developing early form in this demo. Thank you.